nothing beats time. And this time, we are going to talk about limits of a sequence. What is a sequence of a limit? Well, let's find out. All right, let's define some things here. The limit of a sequence. Bam! If the terms of the sequence, a sub k, approach a real number l, as the number of terms k goes to infinity, then we're going to say the limit as that index k goes to infinity of the sequence a sub k, the terms, is the number l, the unique real number l, and we're going to say that it converges. The sequence, that is, converges to L. And we say that L is the limit of the sequence. So basically, it's just like any other limit. Except the only difference is, instead of having the index K, the input that is changing the sequence, go to infinity and having that go across all real numbers, now, k, of course, is reserved to the fact that it has to be a natural number. We're definitely going to look at some examples. But first, if, on the contrary, the terms in the sequence, a sub k here, do not approach a real number l, as the index k goes to infinity, then the limit as that index k goes to infinity of the sequence a sub k, that don't even exist because it doesn't approach a real number, l. And we would say in that case, sequence diverges. So basically, if the limit of a sequence exists as its index goes to infinity, then we're going to say it's convergent. And if the limit of the terms of the sequence a sub k does not approach the real number l as k goes to infinity, then we'll say, well, that sequence diverges. Very similar to previous topics that you may have explored. Okay, so our goal here is, like, okay, we got this stuff. We got a limit of sequence. It's going to either converge if it approaches real number L. Or it's going to diverge if it doesn't approach a real number L. Now, we're going to take a look at some examples to see whether or not some sequences converge or not. For instance, here, here's an example. Determine whether each of the following sequences, which we're about to see, converge or diverge. And if the, se the sequence converges... Let's find that limit. All right, first one. We got a sequence defined by the explicit formula 2 times the arctangent of 1,000 times the index k. That means if we want to determine whether or not the sequence converges or diverges, we have to look at the limit of the sequence. So what is the limit as k goes to infinity of the sequence? Right, that's our job. It either approaches a real unique number L or it doesn't. So let's figure out. Okay, so we're going to look at the limit as K goes to infinity of, well, A sub K. But what is it? It's 2 times the arctan of 1,000. Okay, you may be suspecting, do the properties of limits of continuous functions apply to limits of sequences? And the answer is yes, because when we look at sequences, we're only looking at the index, the thing that's changing here going to infinity, that's a subset of the real numbers. So the properties of what happens continuously for real numbers takes place, of course, because we have a subset. So we could write 
two times the limit. This K goes to infinity of the octane of 1000 K. We could take that constant multiple in front. So all those properties, the limits from real numbers, continuous functions, it all comes down. Same thing takes place down here in the subsets. Okay, well now we got to look at the limit in R10 of 1000K goes to infinity. You may recall that limit K goes to infinity of just regular old uh, the inverse tangent function of K. Just say it's just the regular old K in there. Well, what's the arctangent function do? Looks like this. There's Y is arctan of K. And, you know, I'm just drawing a graph of continuous function arctan. But, of course, everything we just said, sequential, just going to be a subset of that. What is that horizontal asymptote? As k goes to infinity, that's pi over 2. So limit k goes to infinity of arctan of k is pi over 2. And therefore, if I multiply the k by 1,000, billion, trillion, don't matter. It's just going to tell you how fast that limit gets towards pi over 2. So for these reasons, this is just the same as saying 2 times pi over 2. That limit equaling pi over 2. Hence, this limit 2 times pi over 2, just pi. Sweet pi. Yeah. Hence, we found out that the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k, in this case, of 2 times the arctangent function of 1000 k, is equal to pi. This sequence what does it do it converges all right is that good or bad i think it's good but we'll have to see why that's good or bad later on in a different video there's your first example second example example b we got another sequence ace of k say you got the sequence of ace of k's and the explicit formula is given to us by 2 to the k, and then times sine of 2 to the negative k. So still the same answer needs to be uh, addressed here, and that is, what is the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k? Of course, our a sub k here is 2 to the k times sine to the negative k so you think about the properties the limits and whatnot as k goes to infinity 2 to the k is doing something and sine of quantity 2 to the negative k also doing something what's it do well of course as k goes to infinity 2 to k exponential function with growth that's going to go to infinity Sine of 2 to the negative k, however, well, what's that do? Well, as k goes to infinity, 2 to the negative k goes to uh, 0. So, this thing's just going to go to sine of 0, which is 0. So, hence, this thing right here, what's it doing as k goes to infinity? It's going to go to infinity times zero. And if you recall, that's an indeterminate product, not an indeterminate form, but an indeterminate product. And what that means is that you can manipulate that expression within the limit algebraically and turn it into an indeterminate form. How I do so? Well, we're going to rewrite it with trickery. And that is, we're going to divide by the reciprocal of one of the factors. In this case, I'm going to just choose to divide by the reciprocal of 2 to the k, 
which means we're dividing by 2 to the negative k. If I divide by 2 to the negative k, it's the same. It's just multiplying sine of 2 to the negative k by 2 to the k. Hence, it's the same exact thing, but the advantage of this is now numerator here still going to go to 0, but then the denominator also goes to 0. Oh, yes, that's indeterminate form, and we can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to denote that with a little H here for L'Hopital. I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule and rewrite this as limit. K goes to infinity. Remember L'Hopital, take derivative of the top, take derivative of the bottom. Derivative of the top, that's chain rule. Derivative to the negative K. Okay, let's write that. DDK of two to the negative K, but then times the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and leave that input alone. So we still gotta take derivative two to the negative K. On the bottom, derivative of 2 and negative k. So then really the question is, because we're almost done, is what is the derivative of 2 to the negative k? Of course, with respect to k, well, derivative of an exponential function is the logarithm of the base, and then using chain rule, times that exponential function. In this case, natural log of the base is 2. And then, because we got a negative k in there, times negative 1. And then times that same thing. So, of course, we see that appearing on top and bottom. So, even if we did all that and did the computation, found a derivative of the numerator and denominator in terms of the factor derivative of 2 to negative k, it's just going to be the same thing. All it's going to cancel. So, go ahead and noting that 2 to negative k is never 0, this is the same as limit k goes to infinity of cosine 2 to negative k. But of course, as k goes to infinity of 2 to negative k, 2 to negative k goes to 0. So, this is the same thing as cosine of 0 which is one, bam, sequence converges again. So we didn't see an example of it diverging, but if it diverged, what would it do? It would either not become some unique real number, like it would oscillate or be periodic or something like that, or it would go to infinity or negative infinity. It would just become unbounded. <clears throat> In these two examples, they show convergence, both by reviewing a little bit of trigonometric properties, but also reviewing the L'Hopital, which happens when you take a limit. So it really boils down to, okay, we're not talking about these sequences, this list of numbers that go on in a pattern forever, and we want to know whether they're going to just eventually become some number or not. That's what this conversation is about, but it's really the same kind of mathematics that you would use when looking at a limit of a real value function that's continuous. And it's really the same deal. So you just go about the same way and there's new vocabulary. Is it going to converge or diverge? Depends on whether that limit exists or not. So there you go. Convergence, divergence of sequences. Going to continue a little bit more with some sequences and some vocabulary, more on the behavior of sequences, because all these things matter, and they can tell us eventually whether or not if we have certain properties of a sequence. If we add those terms up in the sequence, what would happen then? Stay tuned for that. For now, it's over. So, I hope you liked that one. The end. Bye-bye. Until next time.